is Jackie and I'm here with Frank Sumo of Sum 41. We've got our SJC drums rep here. Uh, we are here at Emo Night, the second anniversary. And you are doing, and you've, you've done this before, you've played your live drum set at Emo Night. I think I caught it at the APMAs. It might be, yeah, might be a mistake. Party. Yeah, in Cleveland. Yes. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about choosing the songs that you're going to live play with? You know, I've been doing this for a little over a year now. I started last summer. And I didn't know really what to expect in the beginning, so I just wanted to kind of do my own spin on it and do mashups, hip hop, throwback stuff. So literally, my set tonight has everything from Johnny Cash to System of a Down. You That's know, like, awesome. Yeah, because you know, it's there's a lot of performers that play a night, and you know, I just want to do something different. And because I'm drumming, it's just fun to go literally on this journey through all these different styles of music and, you know, throwbacks to the emo stuff that, that, you know, the bands I love, but also doing like remixes of them just so it's different stuff. I heard you practicing a little earlier. Oh, cool. I, I think it's neat because it's like, you know, a, a, a DJ traditionally will mix on the turntables, but it sounded like you were sort of mixing and kind of meshing the songs mm -hmm. in totally. live, which yeah, is yeah. a really, uh, through, through drums, which is a really interesting way to go about it. Um, what bands would you consider to be quintessentially emo from back in the day? I mean, probably, you know, the most artists and the most songs you hear at these events are My Chemical Romance, Paramore, The Used. You know, that's kind of like that genre. And those are probably my favorite bands, um, too, from that genre. I mean, my other group, Street Drum Corps, we toured with all those bands in the heyday of all that. We were out supporting, you know, The Used, I mean, a ton and all that. So... It doesn't, it wasn't that long ago, you know, I mean, Shadrunk was only been around for 14 years and, you know, it was like the heyday of that, but this is kind of bringing it all back too, to see how, I mean, it's all like, he just went out there and looked at the crowd and he's like, dude, this is like music from our generation, but it's all little kids out there. So they're rediscovering it, which is really special and cool. I mean, even, you know, they play some 41 always, which is in an emo band, but it somehow got lumped into this and, you know, our fans too are little kids and it's just really cool how just music reinvents itself i mean just the way uh, you know kids our kids find out about led zeppelin you know it's just like this circle of life which is cool for you know these bands to be part of something that's kind of timeless in a sense and i'm going to argue that johnny cash could be considered an emo act oh, if totally. you try hard I'm, enough i'm doing well i'm doing his his um Nine Snails Hurt cover which is the emo fucking anthem of all time so i mean that music video of if you Google it, kids. I mean, like that—that that is such a like. You could put that. You could put that in 2005. You could put that in 2015. You can put 2025. It's still a really good video and a really good cover. Should have had that on the video wall tonight. I'm playing. I was playing. Next time. Next time. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, what you've got going on right now um, with the drum tour. Yeah, so tonight is the end of a two-week run um, that Mike and I just traveled across the East Coast and Midwest. Um, we basically took your traditional drum clinic and turned it upside down and just added all this amazing you know, lifestyle and events to it to really just connect with kids and do something different. We went to China together in March and didn't know what we were in for and just were like, this is our vision, let's just do it our way and see kind of how it works and... It, we, it went so well, and we were so inspired that we got back to America. We partnered up with Vans, and um, we did our first run, you know, these past two weeks. And basically, we wanted to be able to go to music stores to collaborate with School of Rocks with all the kids and go to School of Rocks, then do events with School of Rock at, like, Hard Rock Cafes. And then the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame invited us out to play their summer concert stage. Um, and, you know, we were kind of just able to do all these different markets and different things that traditional drum clinics we would you know happen in and basically I go up there and I do like an intimate um performance where people are right there they're just seeing all the parts I'm playing what I'm doing and it's really not just drummers it's musicians parents grandparents some 41 fans you know SJC fans like it's a lot of that um and then we just hang out with the audience we'll sit there and you know talk just about kind of we'll get a vibe and just see what people want to talk about we kind of change it every night and then um, do a Q&A, do giveaways, and then what we do is we pick a local undiscovered young drummer in each city, and they open the show. We say, here's our stage. <laughs> do whatever you want as long That's as you crazy. want, which is incredible. And then to tie it in, at the end of the performance, they get up with me and play a Sum 41 show, a song. And then with the School of Rocks, 
we've gotten, and even um, at Sweetwater um, in Indiana, we got their academy band to get up, and we did a set of some 41 songs with me and all these kids, and they rip, and it was like just the most inspiring, incredible thing that I've ever done, and like the goal is just to go out there and just try to get kids inspired and just to give them this experience and you know, I just really feel that it's our responsibility as artists when we have this platform and this spotlight and we're on this level that people, you know, are paying attention that we should do something good and positive and just try to, you know, inspire and motivate kids. And it's been like so incredible and rewarding in, in every way. And like, it's really just touching people. And it's just the power of music that's so beautiful and, and incredible. So tonight's the last night and we're gonna go back home and plot the next round. We need to talk to Babs and bring uh, Emo Night to Asia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when we went to China, Frank did a way longer set because drum clinics are more of like a thing there. So he would play for like an hour and all these songs kids were freaking out about. So yeah. maybe we can scheme that up, go back to Asia. Yeah. What do you think about, what, what do you think it is about music that is so universal that you can travel to foreign countries and where you might not be able to speak a lick of the language, but you play some music and they get it yeah. and it just brings everyone together? Why yeah, it's wild. That? I mean... Music in general, but, like, the drums, I think, more specifically, like, it's kind of, like, back to cavemen, like, hitting, you know, bon like, bongos and rocks and stuff, and, like, it just connects everybody in, in such a cool community, and that's what we're trying to foster, is these kids are growing up in a, in a world where they don't know exactly what they want to do, and there's so many things thrown at them, and if we can be a shining light to gu help guide them um, and motivate them to, you know, follow their dreams and their passion... Um, Music's the universal language, and so if we can be a small part of keeping that cohesive thing together, um, you know, that's what that's what inspires us to keep doing it. Well, as a high school teacher of English, oh, I amazing. applaud you. I think that's yeah, great. That's so so cool. that's sort of how I kind of reconnect with my students is through the music that they listen to. If they've got a band T-shirt on them, I'll either listen to it or say, hey, have you heard this old song from them because it's 10 years old, and you, I think you might yeah. really like it. So. That's no, so cool. Yeah, Frank hit it right on the head. Like, this tour has been so so motivating and like emotional at times like there were grandparents and like a 13 year old kid cried when he played with frank you know with the sum 41 song at the end and so it's just kind of bridging that gap between a fan and like a rock star where they to see him on stage and like i'll never meet them i'll never but you know it's here he is right there playing some 41 songs and a mashup of all these different types of you know music right in front of them um it's super powerful so that's that's really cool Thank you for doing that, guys. That that sounds amazing. So Sum 41 has been together on breaks, lineup changes and such for over 20 years now. Um, you've been a part of it for quite a while. What do you attribute to the band's longevity as far as the sound, where, you know, songs from All Killer, No Filler are still played on the radio, I think, on my drive up here, you know, in 2018? I mean, you know, Derek and the guys just really wrote amazing songs that really are you know, classics and, and timeless. And, you know, the band is just having an amazing resurgence and it's been amazing to be part of that. And, you know, it's it's all original members except for, you know, me. Um, and it's just it's just getting bigger and crazier and, and awesome. And, you know, we were supposed to be making a record this whole summer and we weren't supposed to play shows. And the fans, like, literally sort of blowing us up on social media saying it's the anniversary... 15 year anniversary of Does This Look Infected, you need to go out and play the record. And enough, you know, emails came through and on and, and, and social media, we did it. So we put the record on hold, we went out, it was incredible. And that one tour turned into now festivals and this and that. <laughs> so I literally go to Europe and UK after this. We're going to do about uh, three weeks, I think, of festivals. And then we're going to end our year in September at um, Riot Fest in Chicago. And then we got to get to work. We got to get back to the record and all that. Well, then I'm going to knock on wood, not jinx myself, because it should be year three for me covering Riot Fest, and we'll follow up then. But what's the status then? Are you still are you still writing, or you just haven't recorded? Where are you in that process now? Just a lot of, you know, start and stop writing, because literally we've been um, playing shows. I mean, kind of, you know, here and there, back and forth. Um, so we'll we'll get into it in, you know, September once we're done. So that's the, that's the plan now, and um, excited to just, you know... Well, I, right when I joined the band in 2015, we started the record. So it's been a while since we've been in the studio and all that, so I'm really excited to, to get back in. And now, you know, it was, I was so new to the band. Now that we've, you know, toured the world together so often, and it's like, and we played together so much, it's going to be really comfortable doing this record and, and just, you know, the band's so tight now. Cause we play, this, some 41 plays shows. 
Like this band, I mean, we did nine weeks straight in Europe, you know, so. That's it, a lot uh, of shows. It was a lot of shows, yeah. <laughs> so All Killer and Infected were, really came up in this time period when bands were really kind of meshing genres. Um, more of that to continue, do you think? Yeah, I mean, it, it was, you know, all those elements are always going to be there because it's just in the DNA of the band. And it, that's what's exciting about it. You know, we get to do our, you know, our punk stuff, our metal stuff, you know, some of the hip hop -y stuff. So it's just cool to blend all that stuff. And they've been great at, at doing all that. And it's just so funny because so many people just like, it's a pop punk band. Like, it's not. There's so much more. There's like the craziest shredding metal on songs, you know, from from the first record on. Um, and it's just for being a drummer. It's so fun. Well, sounds like a lot like your set that you have planned for tonight at Emo Night. Yeah. I mean, I have like two crazy mashups that you would never think would make any sense whatsoever. And I, I've been doing them on the drum tour just to throw it off. Like I'm doing this medley of some 41 stuff. Then I throw in, it's like Bruno Mars with Mark Ronson and some 41 together. It sounds like it should never go. Like that's like mixing like, you know, sushi and spaghetti with red sauce together you know like but it's amazing and it goes over so well and it's fun to do it you know in in this world mike what's up next for drum tour plans you've got formulating your coping to go international yeah yeah you know and, and it it's kind of off the cuff we were in europe i mean uh asia talking about this and here we are four months later doing it so um, we've had a lot of time in the van to, you know, scheme up and a lot of kids are asking us already to come back, you know, rock hall was like, come back next summer, let's make it bigger. So, um, we'll definitely hit the West coast and, you know, pending with Frank's schedule, um, and, uh, West coast, Europe, Australia, Canada, wherever the kids want to, want to see it go, we'll, we'll be there. That universal language of music. Stay tuned for much more. This is Jackie. Thanks to Chorus FM and in the key of change.